Warriors, today's topic is a very, very important one. We're talking about kids' anxiety. In the world right now, one in eight children are medically diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. And to understand this, I've asked this question to myself and the world over and over and over again. Why? Why is it that some kids develop this deep sensitivity and inner pressure compared to other kids who just seem like, you know, life is just going on just like any other day? Well, we have to come to an understanding that genetics can play, and in the studies today have revealed, can play a small role. We used to think it was a big role, but now we realize that it's a lot smaller role than what we originally thought. Secondly, it's the environment. It's the authority figures. It's the words. It's the energies, the emotions, the physiology of the parents and so forth. Because when I'm talking about physiology, I'm talking about when a child walks into a room, it gets the sense of whether dad or mom is in a good mood and automatically there is a reaction to that. The child becomes in line depending on what the parent is going through in that moment. So the child could be a little bit more sensitive, the child could be more open, more fun, whatever it may be, depending on what they're reading. Now, how do they read a parent? They read a parent through their physiology. So the way they're standing or walking, right? Their breathing patterns, these sorts of things, how fast they're doing things, their facial expressions, their hand gestures, you know, all these sorts of things that a parent does with their bodies send the energetic signal to the child of what's going on or what's going to happen in the future, okay? So parents, please take this into consideration. Now, I want to discuss three very important skill sets that we can use with our child starting today, okay, to lessen and hopefully eventually eliminate anxiety from that child's world, all right? Now, I'm gonna give you an example of the first one, okay? I'm gonna use Johnny again. Johnny is about to go and play a soccer game, all right? Johnny takes the field. He's walking on the field. He looks good, right? And the parents on the side are going, have fun. Oh, one more thing, be careful, right? You hear this with parents all the time. Hey, be careful on the monkey bars. Hey, be careful at school today. Hey, be careful in your sport today. Be careful means the same thing as be afraid. You are literally activating that child's survival and emotional brain to work together, which then takes the thinking brain, the conscious brain, out of the picture. Now, instead of telling a child to be careful, tell them to be aware. Do this as many times as you can throughout the day and explain to them what awareness means. Awareness means to strengthen your consciousness, to strengthen your awareness as to your surroundings, but to not fear your surroundings. Big difference. So replacing be careful with be aware. Comment below if you're one of those parents that do this. All right. Second thing, Johnny comes home and he says, Mommy, Daddy, I just went through a test at school and I feel like I did really, really bad and it was a really, really horrible experience. So here's what we do, and we want to make this consistent as far as a skill set that we work with our child with. Whatever the situation, it doesn't have to be a test, it could be anything, all right? Holding hands together, eyes closed, beginning, middle, and end. If the child could go back and relive the same situation, but experience perfection in their eyes, where they saw certain things, heard certain things, and felt certain things much differently than what they actually experienced, how would that experience go? 
So Johnny closes his eyes, so does mom or dad. They're holding hands and they're reliving that perfect scenario in their imagination. Johnny walks into the room. He's confident, right? He's saying hi to everyone. He knows he's got the skills to do a very good job at that test. And then we move on to the middle. Johnny's taking the test and it's going really smoothly and he's very confident. He looks empowered. You know, he sees everyone around him. He hears the birds outside. He feels like he's in tune with a good vibration. Then, as Johnny's imagining, he imagines the end. He's walking out with great confidence and hugging people and congratulating people and he's being congratulated and he's looking forward to lunch. Boom, done. So, like I said, it could be any situation. It doesn't have to be a test. It could be anything where the child comes home and either shares with you or suppresses the experience, right? And you go, hey, let's reframe this, okay? Very, very powerful. And thirdly, what you wanna do is you wanna make more mistakes with your child. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I had to say the right things all the time and be a certain way and act a certain way and smile a certain way. I had to do everything in a very perfect manner. Why? To please my authority figures. And were they ever pleased? Right? So make more mistakes. Go to the grocery store. Get a big, nice cake. Hey, Johnny, have a piece of cake, right? Johnny's eating the cake, and all of a sudden, you take that cake, and boom! Dad, why'd you do that? It's fine. We're just having fun, right? Right? So make more mistakes. And let's say you're going skating together, and Johnny feels like he has to be a very good skater. All of a sudden, you're skating, and boom! You intentionally fall. Johnny goes, Daddy, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You know, falling is part of everything. You know, it's okay to make mistakes. Johnny starts to go, hmm, I don't have to be as good at, as this mind is telling me to be good at in this particular situation. I can be flexible in how I go about what I'm about to go about. So very, very, very important stuff. Make more mistakes. Find opportunities to make more mistakes with your child. And you can get really creative with this. Give them a sense that they can live life on their own terms as well as adopt the good lessons that the parents are providing the child. This is crucial. The child begins to feel not powerless, but powerful and as they go into situation after situation, they will begin developing their thinking brain. They will become logical. They will become rational. They will perceive difficult situations much differently than other anxious kids who haven't done these three things. All right? I love you guys so much. Comment below on which one of these three you're going to start using as a parent with your child. And if you have any other questions on the End the Anxiety program, head on over here and remember that you and your child are more than anxiety. Don't forget to subscribe. I love you all. Bye-bye.